heavy dates a little easier. As we work back down here to the smaller pregnancies, this is where we can become much more accurate in estimating actual developmental age, especially when we get to the small ages along in here. When we look at these very small developing fetuses, sometimes it is difficult for the unskilled practitioner to successfully tell you that the animal is pregnant. However, when you have a skilled person doing your palpation and they can tell you that an animal is pregnant at 45 versus 90 days, they can be very accurate on the actual guesstimation on the time of expected calving dates. When we are trying to determine the age of the younger fetuses that we have here by rectal palpation, we should first consider the fact that we are mainly going to be filling the fluid that is filling up the reproductive tract. The tract will still be back in the pelvic cavity and it will not be extended over the brim of the pelvis yet. The main factor that we feel for is the fluid and sometimes we can actually bop or bob for the fetus itself by using a downward motion of our hand on top of the reproductive tract. We can get this fetus to float away from us and then back up and bop against our hand. And that's a good way to determine that we have these earlier stages of development. Now as we get to the larger stages, when we first reach our hand into the rectum and bop down over the reproductive tract, this large fetus is gonna come up very quickly and bop against our hand. And so we can very easily determine that the animal is pregnant. Then by actually feeling and trying to touch the head and estimate the size using our hand, we can determine the age to be within that 90 to 120 day time frame. Ultrasonography is another method of determining pregnancy in cattle. However, it is most effective over here during your early stages of development. When we get the extremely small fetuses like we have down here, it's sometimes difficult for a person to determine pregnancy just by palpation. With ultrasound, we get an actual image of that structure as it develops. We can actually see the fetus. In fact, we can go down as early as approximately 25 to 30 days of gestation and still pick up the developing fetus. So during these very early stages of development, ultrasound is very useful as a tool for determining pregnancy. As we get to these larger stages, it's really not necessary. The skill of the practitioner using his hand is much more effective and much more rapid than using ultrasound. Even as you get to your later stages of development, ultrasound is not very effective in determining age because it is very difficult to get an entire fetus imaged on an ultrasound scan. Now we are going to illustrate the enlargement of the reproductive tract as we progress through the gestational stages. Starting off here, we have two open tracts, two non-pregnant animals. Notice the very small, uniform size of the two uterine horns. These animals have slightly different sized horns, but this is expected with animals of varying age. There will be quite a bit of difference as the animals go through a number of parturitions. Okay, but both horns are, have a lack of fluid. We do not have a very a very much enlargement of either one of them. Sometimes we do have slight enlargement of one horn over the other one. This is indicative of the previous pregnancy many times. So it should not be mistaken as a pregnancy at this point. Now, as we move into the pregnant tracts, here we have a tract with a large amount of swelling and fluid that we have building up in this is probably the left uterine horn. On this particular animal, we are looking at between 45 to 60 days of gestation. We have a lot of fluid in here and as we palpate, you notice that as we push down on one area, we can get a rebounding effect on the other side. Now this is what we were talking about when we said we bop for the fetus. As we apply pressure here, that fetus will float away from us and it come back against our hand. So we can actually fill through this tract and determine that there is a fetus in there and the particular size of that developing fetus. As we move here to the larger pregnancy, now we are looking at an animal that's approximately 90, oh, 90 to 100 days gestation. We have a, a great amount of fluid building up in this is the right uterine horn as compared to the left horn. Once again, as we bop down, we can see the movement inside here as the animal goes down away from us and then bops back against our hand. Here we're looking at approximately 120 days of gestation. We have a great amount of enlargement now. The opposite uterine horn still has not developed a lot of fluid inside of it. 
So your pregnancy is mainly isolated in the pregnant horn. Once again, as we bop down, we get a lot of movement and we can get that fetus to come back and hit against our hand. Let's review what we have learned. The estrous cycle is a regular pattern of changes in the female body that is under hormonal control. Estrus occurs every 21 days and is the time when the cow is receptive to mating. Estrus synchronization allows the producer to concentrate labor efforts when using an artificial insemination program. Detection of estrus is essential to the procedures of artificial insemination and embryo transfer. Superovulation increases the number of eggs released during ovulation, which is very important when used in conjunction with other technologies like artificial insemination and embryo transfer. Freezing of semen and embryos has made it possible for cattlemen to purchase and use semen from bulls that were previously unavailable to them. Embryos can be sold, shipped, and transferred later. Export of these products has helped to improve the breeding stock in other countries where these superior animals were unavailable. Artificial insemination has greatly improved availability of superior genetics to the cattlemen. Many cattlemen who did not have access to certain bulls now have the ability to purchase semen from these bulls. When superovulation, artificial insemination, and estrus synchronization are used together, embryo transfer is possible. Early developing embryos are transferred to recipient cows for gestation. This procedure allows increased use of superior females in a similar manner as artificial insemination does for bulls. Early detection of pregnancy can be accomplished through rectal palpation or ultrasound. The ultrasound procedure is more accurate than palpation when detecting extremely early pregnancies. These technologies, some new and some not so new, can drastically improve the reproductive efficiency of a herd and propagate superior genetics into populations where they were once unavailable. These practices have not been available to all producers, but progressive cattlemen should consider them options when planning breeding schemes. These innovations may not be suitable for all breeding programs, but they can help producers reach their goals of improved reproductive efficiency and increased calf crop.